Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is time for another perfume video. I love these videos. <laughs> I know they don't get as many views, but I don't even care because I film them because I love them so much. And I know there are quite a few of you who are also perfume junkies. So I like to bring y'all along for the ride. And today we are talking about my top comforting and cozy scents. And what do I mean by that? I mean, since that I could wear to bed, because sometimes I do, I shower at night and then sometimes I just want something comforting and cozy to watch TV on the couch late at night and then go to bed in. Or since that maybe I just want to wear on a rainy day. One of my favorite things to do, we have a screen and porch, which is my favorite place in this house. And I love when it's raining outside to go sit on that screen and porch and just watch. And to me, these scents are perfect for that. That is what I mean for comforting and cozy, just warm scents. They aren't all warm, but that's how they make me feel. Does that make sense? Let's just get into it. I'm not gonna go in any particular order because I love all of them, but I will be bringing Chadwick in at the end and have him smell all of them and tell you which one his favorite is. He is busy working, so he couldn't film this video with me, but he is gonna hop in and smell them all and tell y'all his favorite. So the first one that I'm gonna talk about is actually not a perfume, it is an oil. And this is the Nest Madagascar Vanilla Perfume Oil. I love Nest. I feel like Nest was one of the very first brands that I really got into as far as perfume years ago. My 13 year old daughter wears a Nest and every time she comes down, I'm like, oh, you smell so good. But this is an oil. And now this is the roller ball. They also have a dropper, but it can be pretty hard to find. Hopefully they're gonna be restocking that very soon. But this is basically vanilla bean, vanilla orchid, and coconut. And with the coconut, you would think it's gonna be super sweet. And it is a little bit sweet. It's probably the sweetest one uh, that I'm gonna talk about, but it, it's not cloying. And it has like, even though it has a coconut, it has a very warm undertone to me. It just feels soft. It's an oil. Some oils, perfume oils to me will project. This one doesn't as much. It really stays close to the skin, which is fine because when I'm wanting a scent like this, it's, I really just want it for myself. I want to have a scent bubble around me and this provides that. If you had the dropper, you could easily add that into some maybe unscented lotion and apply that and it would leave such a beautiful trail. Oh, it's so nice. I can definitely smell the coconut. If you're not a fan of coconut, I probably would steer clear of this. But when I smell this, the prominent note is still vanilla, as the name states. So if you just want a very pretty, cozy vanilla scent, and you're maybe not someone who wants to have this huge perfume collection, you want something you can keep in your purse um, and reapply throughout the day, definitely one to look at, the Nesk Madagascar Vanilla Perfume Oil. Next the one that we're gonna be talking about is the only other one that I have in like a small travel size. And this is from Replica. And when I'm done with this, I will be purchasing the full size. And it is Coffee Break. Now this is one that when I first got it, I only got the travel size because I just knew I was not gonna like it. Everybody was talking about how much they loved it. And I was like, I just, I, I know I'm not gonna like it because it has lavender in it. And people kept saying that they could smell the lavender. And I am not a lavender fan. I don't like lavender candles. I don't like lavender oil. It just turns my stomach. I wish I did because I feel like it's in everything, but I don't. So this has pepper, orange blossom, and patchouli, lavender, coffee, milk, tonka bean, benzoin, cypriol oil, vanilla, vetiver, and cedar. And it's the coffee and milk that made me get this because this, you know, replica is supposed to make you feel like you are in a certain place or event. And this is supposed to make you feel like you're on a coffee break. So I thought it was going to smell like walking into a, you know, coffee shop. And then when I saw lavender, I'm like, mm, mm, I don't know. And even when I first wore it, I was like, oh, I don't know. But oh my goodness, the second time I wore it, I had had it on for about an hour and I got this waft of scent and I immediately fell in love. That's what it took. I don't know why, I don't know what it was. It's beautiful. I do not get an overwhelming sense of lavender. If I did, I wouldn't like it. Man, this is comfy cozy. It's like tonic a little bit, meaning milky, because it does have that milk note. And to me, that is not gross. I love lactonic fragrances. Some people are like, ooh, milk note. 
it just gives a little bit of a creaminess to the smell. I don't smell coffee in this, I will say. I do not smell coffee. Um, I'm, I'm really kind of confused on the name because of that fact. I smell a little bit of the orange blossom and patchouli, but the patchouli is not dirty in my opinion. I love a good dirty patchouli, but this is not it. And then the tonka bean and the vanilla give it a little bit more of that creaminess, but I would not call this a sweet scent. But this is, like it says, something I can envision being in a Barefoot Dreams cardigan, something super soft, and sitting in a coffee shop, sipping on coffee and looking out the window while it's snowing. That is like what I envision wearing this. And it's so beautiful and it's very unique to me. I don't have anything like that in my collection and I don't know that I've smelled anything similar to it either. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this next one because I've talked about it so much, but it is from Theodoros Calotonis, Calotinus, and it is Coffee Addict, Eau de Parfum. I did a whole Instagram thing, story lineup of this when I got it because I fell so head over heels in love. I love wearing this to bed, even though it is a strong coffee scent. Now you cannot dislike coffee or the smell of coffee in any way and get this. Whereas coffee break, I don't smell the coffee, but it has it in its name. Coffee addict, it's all about the coffee. But this is more of a caramel coffee. So it's got coffee, caramel, vanilla, and cacao pod listed as the notes. And this is comforting to me because I envision being outside and super cold. I'm all bundled up, coming inside, and I'm making a caramel latte. And I'm putting my nose, like I'm holding the warm cup and I'm putting it up to my nose. That is this perfume. Don't even question it. If you like coffee, get this. Now, Theodor Theodoros Calatinus is a Greek perfumer. So you do have to get it from overseas. I don't know and I'm not aware of anywhere else that you can get it. I have three scents from him and I love them all. And I paid for shipping on one, one shipment. I didn't on another because if you spend a certain amount, then you can get free shipping. And it's actually fairly fast for coming from overseas if you're in the States. Totally worth it. Love that so much. I've talked about this one a lot too, and it has since been repackaged in a new bottle. I cannot speak to if it's been reformulated. I think they say it hasn't, but then some other people say they feel like it's different. But this is Killian, I just say princess, but the full name is I don't need a prince by my side to be a princess. Some of these names kill me. I just call it princess. This is one of my favorite bedtime scents, and it's very, fluffy to me. That's the first adjective that comes to mind when I smell this. It is a green tea based scent. So it has lemon on the top. I do not get lemon. It has green tea, ginger, peach, hedion, jasmine, and apple in the middle, marshmallow, vanilla, and benzoin in the base. Now I feel like this is a very linear perfume. I don't really smell the top and the middle and the base as I wear it and as it progresses on the skin. I feel like once I spray it, that's what I get the entire time I have on, but that's okay because I love the way it smells. Now, I don't get some of these notes. I don't get lemon. I don't get apple. I don't really get peach. I love peach in a fragrance, but I don't really get that. I get the green tea, the marshmallow, and a little bit of the ginger. So again, it's just a warm, comforting scent, but it's fluffy. That marshmallow gives it that fluffy vibe. And I would call this more cozy than comforting. And it's really hard to distinguish how they are different in my head, but they just are. And I love, love wearing this to bed. That is actually the majority of where I wear this. Now, once it starts getting colder outside, I will wear this more during the day. It works great in the summer too. I'm not saying that, but I just tend to reach for it the most after I've gotten out of the shower at night. So good. Now let's talk about the newest addition to my collection. And when I first smelled this, I immediately thought that it belonged in this group of scents because you don't get much more comforting than this scent. This is from Atelier Materi. I think it's how you pronounce it. And this is Cacao Porcelana. So Twisted Lily sent this my way and I want to tell you this is one of my favorite bottles in my entire collection because of this cap. 
I don't know if you can see, it is a stone cap. Look at that, it's so pretty. I love square bottles, love square bottles. BDK, Carner Barcelona, those type this. I, I just love, even though this is more rounded off, I love the square. So I have tried a couple of scents from this house and I have a couple more head in my way sample wise because I've been so impressed with them. I just have to read this little paragraph because I just feel like it explains it. White cacao beans are a rare ancestral variety of cacao, also known as the nectar of the gods. The beans are removed from the pods, fermented, then sun-dried and roasted. White cacao yields sensuous notes of walnut and milk, there's that milk, with hints of tonka bean. After opening on sweet syrupy top notes, cacao porcelana unpacks its bitterness, sustained by powdery and woody notes. Light tobacco, patchouli, and sandalwood scents give cacao porcelana a sensual, even fleshy signature. Sensual is so true. And I do get, when you first spray it, I get a little bit of the bitter note from that cacao. But y'all, there is rum in this. I love a boozy perfume. Love it so much. Immortel, white tobacco, divana, Indian jasmine, tonka bean, patchouli, and sandalwood. I mean, I get the cacao and the rum straight off the bat. The bitterness has already gone away. So like, it's just there right when you spray it and then it dies off. Little bit of that tonka bean, but it's, it's really the cacao and the rum for me. And that patchouli is a sturdy base for it. So it's gonna help those. I feel like the patchouli is the supporting character in this, which it not often is, but it is that note at the base that helps the cacao and the rum shine in my opinion because that's what I get most. Now, I am not saying that I will not wear this throughout the day all the time, come fall and winter, but I love wearing this when I want to be comfy and cozy. This is a close to the skin scent, which honestly, a lot of these are, probably most of them. I think I'll talk about one that is a little bit more projecting, and it doesn't last all day long. This is more of a, three to four hour fragrance, which is fine because when I wear it at night and I wanna be cozy, I don't need something to last forever, but I will be respraying this throughout the day when I start wearing it throughout the day. I have worn it throughout the day when I first got it, but oh, it's just, first of all, this, the top, it's beautiful. Very, very well blended, boozy cacao. And I'm not even gonna say boozy chocolate because this is more of a boozy cacao. There is a difference. I'm not smelling milk chocolate. It's not overly like creamy, milky candy bar to me at all. It is true cacao and it is beautiful. All right, three more to go. This one I have talked a lot about, talked about on Instagram and some other videos too. This was sent to me by the brand. This is Nichols Botanica. And this is Memoir de Iris, de Iris, you know, Iris. <laughs> I love Iris so much. This has a more prominent lavender note, but it is still one that I love. This is a perfume company. It was started by actually someone who, it, I don't know if he still works as a makeup artist, but he used to, um, has a love of scents like I do, and he started this and all of the ingredients are natural. So the ingredients on this is bergamot, mandarin, lavender absolute, orris root, tonka bean, musk, and vanilla, Madagascar vanilla. So while I can smell the lavender, to me the iris really shines and it's more of a sharper iris. I wouldn't say it's a soft or creamy iris, but the reason I find this comforting is because of how the lavender and the iris mix together. And this is one that lives on my bedside table. And if for some reason I, maybe I took a shower at like six o'clock that night, I sprayed something on. Zeus says hi. And it's worn off or I didn't spray something on and I am about to hit the pillow I'm spraying this on. This is something that immediately calms me down. So this is more of the calming fragrance within this collection versus the comforting and cozy. But calming it does and it's beautiful. Really beautiful. This next one is a couple of things. It's one that was the most surprising to me because the Accord Pyramid on Fragrantica has a lot of green 
accords in them. I'm not a green fragrance lover. I also don't really associate green fragrances with comforting, but this one is. This is Elizabeth Arden White Tea, and this is an oldie but a goodie, and it is not a heavy hitter. It is not a long laster. It's extremely affordable, so I just spray away, and I respray away, and I respray away, and I just don't even care because it is such a glorious scent. And if you have noticed, like there's green tea in the Killian, I feel like tea notes in fragrances really lean towards it being a comfy, cozy fragrance, in my opinion. This has sea notes, fern, mandarin orange, clary sage, white tea, white iris, mate, ambrette, exotic woods, tonka bean, and amber. There's a lot going on in this scent. And it's definitely not warm like some of the other ones are, which would make sense since it's got so many green accords. But to me, it's comforting and it is cozy and it is beautiful and it is affordable. And I had to include it because it's beautiful. I think most people would say this lends more towards a spring summer scent, but I can see me wearing this all year round. If you're someone who doesn't want your fragrances to last long and surely doesn't want them to be something that precedes you into a room, but you want to smell fresh and clean and comfortable and just pretty, this is one to look for. And then the final fragrance is one of my absolute fragrances ever. And I don't know why it took me so long to smell this, but the second I did, I got a sample of it. I immediately went on to Selfridges and purchased the Big Daddy. This is Dior Homme Intense. Now this is technically marketed for men, but I love this. Chad prefers this on me versus him. I would love it if he wore this, but it lives in this room and it has lavender in it. Are you sensing a theme? This is the third fragrance out of this. It has lavender and I don't even like lavender, but this is gorgeous. It has lavender on the top, iris, ambrette, pear, cedar, and betterer. I can't even describe to you. This is a iris that is more pronounced by the support of lavender versus the other way around. I don't get pear. It does turn into a woody, musky iris scent. That's what it is. But oh, it is like cozy. I love this so much. And just to give you a little bit of an idea about how much this is loved all around, if you are familiar with Fragrantica, it gives you a rating, an average rating, and then it shows you how many people have voted to get to that rating. It's all out of five. This has a 4.5 out of five rating with 10,943 votes. That's insane. If you look at the reviews, everybody just sings the absolute praises of this, and it is because it is absolutely beautiful. This is the biggest bottle of perfume I have in my collection. This is five ounces and it's beautiful. It is beautiful. I will wear this. I could, this could be a signature for me. It could be a signature. I don't know how else to explain this other than I absolutely love it. All right, so I'm gonna go try and find Mr. Chad, have him come in and let's see what his favorite is. Hi. <laughs> what? It's funny. Yeah, you're nay. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Hi. I feel it looks sweaty. I am sweaty. It's not bad. Okay. okay. Not, not as good as that other one, but not bad. Okay. Makes me crave a cappuccino. <laughs> it's okay. Not, not bad. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 That, that's my favorite. Okay. Which one is it? This Which one won? Uh, the Nest Madagascar Vanilla Perfume Oil. Nest? Nest. That's how, the name. Nest New York. Name. I don't know. Is it the brand name or, or yeah. the name of the... Nest New York. Hmm. Yeah. Right. And his second was Princess. Those were his top two. I think I've smelled that one. Before. You have. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right. So there you have it. Those are his top two. I love all of them. I will have them all listed and linked down below for easy access. And I would love to know your favorite comforting, cozy perfume. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any other future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.